Welcome to part seven of Microasis Workshop SE5A build, as it says up there. Um, I have full control. Oh, I can switch it on and off. How about that? <laughs> the click of a button. Anyway, welcome to part seven. Um, here is, let's go to the build board. That's easier for you to, uh, to see what we're going on about. So, here we are so far. What have we done? Well, we've uh, built the fuselage of the SE5A. Uh, we have put the tail feathers on. And we have put the lower wing on, built that, put it on. We've got the undercarriage on here as well. And we've got our um, cabane struts uh, in place there. Uh, next move is to do our uh, interplane struts um, and uh, and start the rigging process uh, before we put the, uh, the the top wing on let's see how far we get in the uh, in the next hour um, so anyway let us grab and put that to one side over there let us grab the parts that we will need firstly we need a little bit of uh, carbon fiber um, that's different on this new version 2 build of the SE5A um, we need the struts themselves and we need some strut stickers too. So if you've been following the rest of the build, you'll know that the carbon fiber uh, is going to be put onto the struts to reinforce them so they're not so, uh, so flexible and uh, give them a bit of rigidity. And then the stickers will go over the um, go over the carbon fiber and add that wood look back to the uh, the other face of the uh, of the struts, the leaping struts. So I've got a feeling it's, it's it's been a few weeks since I've I did the last video to produce to get to, to that stage. There have been a few things happening in between um, that I've had to attend to, hence why I haven't been able to get back to the, uh, the building board. But um, that's all done and dusted now. And we can crack on. So and this knife has obviously been used uh, quite a bit other than on this build because the blade is extraordinarily blunt. Um, do I have some spares around here? I don't think so. Um, we'll crack on. We'll we'll use it. There's there's enough bite there to uh, to do what I want to do, just not uh, not as effectively. So anyway, I'm just removing the excess material from these struts, all the little tabs and bits and pieces. So um, yeah, P25 and I guess P24 or P26. Anyway, it'll be in the manual. You can tell me. There we go. So. Onto here, we are going to put our carbon fiber. Now, I don't want the carbon fiber, I want the carbon fiber in the center, but I don't want it interfering with the rigging holes, which you should, if you've got decent eyesight, or half decent eyesight, should be able to see. Um, otherwise, I'll just give you the dimensions. So let's just take that to there. So just by running the knife across makes a dent in it so I can now feel that dent with the blade and then just run the blade through on the cutting mat and there we go. So let's just measure that up so you know how long it is. I'd say that is about 50, 59, 58 and a half, 59 millimetres. So 
knowing that the other strut is exactly the same I'm just going to mirror that cut by placing the already cut piece of carbon fiber up to the rest of the uh, material As you can see on there, I didn't actually cut all the way through. I, I cut most of the way through and then and snapped it off, which you can do as well. And although I'm going to check, I'm going to assume that the other strut requires the same amount, but I'd be wrong. I'd say an extra millimeter for the uh, the rearward strut. Um, let's just place that over there let's do our little measuring trick once again now once again you can you can ignore the um, the measurements given in the uh, in the manual and uh, and just use this technique to uh, to put as much carbon fiber down as as you think is required but uh, yeah I'd say that's pretty good and then here's the last bit of this strip of carbon fiber excuse my head going down there I just had to have a quick look there we go so that's for our rearward strut that's for our forward strut. So let's break out the Yoohoo and get glowing. I always feel I should have a little bit of music on in the background, but of course, if I publish a video with uh, with music in, then all the audio gets removed because I haven't paid a license for it. So, uh, so we won't, there'll just be a beautiful silence. Okay. Let's just position that there. And get the rear one done too. It is an ideal building day today. It's um, it's a Saturday. Yes, I'm in on a Saturday. Who wouldn't be? Um, and uh, it's utterly filthy outside. It's windy, very windy, 30, 40 mile an hour winds. And, um, and it's raining too, lovely. So, perfect building weather. Okay. Just make sure that's the right one. Yep. On goes the glick. I'm not uh, too precious about keeping my fingers free of YooHoo, but. If I do feel I've got any on there, I just sort of bead it off like that. So when it comes to touching parts that uh, will be on the exposed side, I'm not going to get you who all over it. Now with these more rigid struts that previously in the um, uh, in the, the older version, or version one, um, we didn't have the carbon fiber. We just put some more of the uh, of the, the plastic material over the top. Um, 
the advantage of that was that uh, we had a very flexible um, strut, so it was very it's very good at shock absorption. Um, but um, it does tend to it was well, it's just not with the two part the two bits of, um, uh, of of plastic material there. It just wasn't it wasn't enough. It wasn't stiff enough. Um, I don't think so. I thought what I'd do is. Uh, is actually put some carbon fiber on much like all the other struts um, apart from I think it's the um, the D7 Fokker D7 so uh, S36 let's just peel that off um, and the top gray parts of these all of these stickers um, denote the upper part of the um, of the strut so uh, You'll notice there are a few little cutouts in this uh, in this part. Um, there's also a little lozenge bit that just needs plucking out. This is just basically to uh, allow the rigging to to go through. It's uh, on the opposite side of these. Uh, on the strut is uh, the the little rigging hole. So, um, okay, so here we go on um, S36 goes on to this particular strut here uh, at, the, at the front. So let's just get the head down. This is always a fun bit, just getting these lined up. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna resort to guerrilla tactics. And use. Let's put it down. It's easier. Less movement. There we go. That's so much easier, isn't it? So much easier. Now to align quickly. Turning it over is quite useful because you can see the white of the uh, of the underside. So if you need to reposition, there we go. So I'm just going to use the back of the knife just to get the sticker all the way down. I know it means that you get the carbon fiber showing through somewhat or certainly the profile of it but it means that the uh, the sticky is doing its work and keeping everything together so so logic would say that s37 is a sticker to decorate the rear into plane on here and you, you don't necessarily have to get rid of these little lozenges at this stage you could do it when the sticker was actually on the uh, on the strut itself but I'm just doing it as a, a way of showing you that they are actually there because they're quite uh, quite a challenge to see if you if you uh, aren't made aware that, um, that they're actually there so so the gray bit facing up get our tweezers let's move the tweezers down a little bit so let's position that at the bottom of the strut and then lay it down Yeah, that looks good. Let's squash it down. Use our little back of the blade tool. Well, not back of the blade, back of the knife tool. Don't do it with the back of the blade. The stickers are quite delicate until they're, until they're down. So there we go. One strut. Done. 
next two to go. So S38, that's going to be our forward stroke, I assume. So you can't see me peeling this off, but it's just about getting a getting an edge up. So let's get that in position. Good. Just, yeah, perfect. Yeah, I'll take that. Last one. What you can do if you can't get it out with a fingernail is just tease it up with a knife. It's actually so much easier. I should be doing that off the bat, but uh, there we go. These little lozenges that come out. You end up finding them in such weird places weeks after you've built the uh, the aircraft. Right, so grey side at the top, or obviously if you're uh, if you're building one of the other SE5s that have been converted over to version two, whatever the colour is at the top of the struts. Lay that down. Oh, uh, check for white lines. Looks like we've got a little bit at the front, so I'm just going to peel it off and reposition. As I said before, if you've got any excess sticker, just rub it down. You can even use the side of the knife just to bring it to bear on one of the edges. It should stay in place. So, great stuff. Oh, we've frozen again. That's no good, is it? Disconnect, reconnect. We're back. How bad? <laughs> hmm. Not so sure. It makes for good tally, does it? <laughs> having it freezing all the time. So anyway, we've got both struts made up now. Um, and each strut goes in. Now you'll notice that the the rib on the uh, on the wing itself, um, the slot is on the inside. Um, and what I want is for the printed side, you see here, um, to actually sit on the outside of the uh, the rib so that the uh, the color um, sits uh, sits on the outside too um, with uh, with the se5a you can actually push the strut in through the slot he said trying desperately or well, maybe not let's let's try from the top let's do that so slot that in front Back in front. 
let's just open this up a little bit it's uh I think there's some glue blocking the way so I'm just going to use the knife but I'm using it backwards so that when I get to the, the far end it's not going to slice through the wing there we go so let's actually push In you go. There we go. You can't see that, can you? There we go. There we are. One strut in place. Um, now on. The other strut, before we actually uh, move on to uh, putting that in there, well actually no, what we'll do, we're going to put that in there, uh, let's just make sure our, the slot is uh, clear of debris or any glue that would hinder its insertion and then pop it in. As you can see on these uh, on these struts, um, the top of the strut um, is flush with the, uh, the, the the struts themselves, whereas at the bottom we've got these little tabs that hang out at the side. The idea is slot in, and it will go only go so far um, and uh, and stop. We're not actually securing these uh, struts in place at the moment. Um, we won't do that until uh, we've we've rigged and we've got the um, the top wing on. So there we go. Now there's a slight mismatch in the uh, in where the colour sits on there. Um, I'll uh, obviously get that sorted out prior to. Uh, shipping this kit so that you don't have the same mistakes I do that's why we do the build good so they're in place now as I was going on about this starboard strut um, before I decided to install it um, a little extra detail that we have on this kit um, is a, uh, a pitot tube um, essentially a, uh, a device that uh, helped gauge airspeed for the uh, for the pilot so he knew how fast he was going now obviously this doesn't do that um, but it's representative of the uh, of the, the um, device itself so and that actually on the SE5A from what I've researched goes on the um, forward starboard interplane strut so the pitot tube is actually in two parts uh, in the kit uh, P34 and 35 I think is the ones that I just cut out um, and they're basically just mirror images of one another um, and they actually go on to let's get, get our kit back they go onto the struts, or the forward strut, around about probably a third of the way down the strut itself. And they just sit either side of the strut um, and, and glue together. So what we'll do, we'll position one first, and then we'll glue the other one uh, to it. We'll do the inner one first because that's a nice flat side. So it's going to go on there. It's going to be the V shape itself that's going to get uh, stuck to there. But what we'll do is we'll actually we'll add a little bit of glue to work to all of the inside of the uh, of the part.
This is quite a delicate piece. And it goes on with the uh, the kinked tube because there are two tubes there, the kinked tube facing downwards. So let's just position it appropriately. And obviously, we want it sort of along the same lines as the aircraft will be travelling. I think I've got it just about there. There we go. And then get my second part. Go. Get some glue onto that as well. And I'll just let that dry off a little, like we do with the, some of the other parts, and then attach that. <laughs> if I can detach it from myself, attach that um, once the uh, once the glue has dried a little. Okay. So um, there we have our struts in place, not glued, as I said. Um, they're just sitting there using the uh, the friction. Um, now, what we're going to do uh, prior to um, attaching the top wing, oh, well, building the top wing and attaching it, is we're actually going to uh, rig, put the rigging on, um, nice and slack. We'll only tighten it up once we've uh, we're happy with the um, the top wing where it's positioned. Um, I've got it. Um, essentially glued in place and uh, then we can tighten all the rigging up and, uh, so let's just get our rigging out now the rigging you receive will come in a little envelope and it'll probably look like uh, like that um, but the, on the uh, front of the envelope, it should provide you with some information, a little hot tip, um, to actually stretch this material, uh, this, this rigging wire, prior to use. Now, I've already pre-stretched this. Um, essentially, I just uh, I've tied it in a loop, and um, uh, tied it in a loop, and then hung a, um, a water bottle from it, that was probably around about um, two kilos, something like that, um, and let it dangle there for 24 hours, in fact, um, to take any stretch out of this material. Oh, this uh, it's, it's actually a uh, Spectra um, fishing line. Um, it's a, a number of strands wound together um, it's a sort of nice dark silver colour, which uh, sort of representative of of rigging wire to some extent. Um, but uh, yeah, if we can take as much stretch out as possible, then we're not going to get so much of the rigging going slack over time on the uh, on the build itself. So that's quite a good tip. Um, right now, you want to know how to rig this? So do I. Um, before we do, let's just finish off our pit at tube. So, just marry that to the, to the other side. As we said, easier said than done. <laughs> Maybe I should have used my tweezers. Best, isn't it? Okay, I haven't, I haven't pressed it home yet, so it should be fairly easy to uh, to take apart. There we go. And then there we are. Perfect.
good. Done. And I can squash it down so the glue takes effect. So you can see we've got our, our little bit of tube. There we go. Nice little bit of detail for our 124th scale radio controlled SE5A. Fabulous. Just uh, getting it around the, um, the little carbon fiber. There we go. Right, good. Rigging. Now, here we have the Micro Aces patented rigging tool. Um, not really. Not at all patented because it's actually just a needle threader, um, as many of you will know. Um, what I'm going to do is the actual tip of the needle threader. I'm just going to squeeze a bit just to make it a little sharper, if you like. Uh, because obviously it's going to go through these tiny little holes that have been laser cut in the, uh, the struts. Um, but first we need a starting point and if my memory serves me correctly one of those starting points is at the bottom of the sorry at the bottom of the undercarriage so what I'm going to do is just take my needle threader and push it through the hole um, at the bottom of the uh, of the undercarriage there uh, it's a hole that sits probably about three or four mil above the axle hole and just to the right of it as you look at it from the side and then I'm just going to grab my uh, one end of the rigging actually before I do that let's just subdivide this rigging into at the moment two parts so let's get make sure they're relatively equal lengths oops <laughs> you've gone over there come back there we go relatively equal lengths <laughs> where's it gone And what you will notice is this is pretty tough stuff to cut. Um, it's, um, it's it's pretty good at resisting the uh, the knife um, to uh, to some extent. So anyway, okay, let's turn this over. So I'm just going to push that through the needle threader and pull it out to the outside. Of the um, of the undercarriage, and then I'm going to do a, a stopper knot or a figure of eight knot. So it's basically you take the uh, the thread in a loop, then around the back of the, uh, the the thread, then back through the loop, and it forms a sort of a figure of eight that you can then pull tight, and it's a little bit bigger than a, just a, a standard over and under knot. And then the tail that's sticking out, I'll just get rid of that. Just leaving a couple of mil on that side. Told you it was tough to cut. Um, and then, so that, that's now through. Now the next hole we need to take it through is at the uh, top of the opposite leg of the undercarriage. I'm just going to pop the needle threader through, through there, and it's actually, I don't think I, uh, I don't think I pushed through on the sticker. So I'm just going to put a hole through the sticker using the tip of the knife. 
I'm actually going to put the needle threader through the wrong way just to make sure it will go through through the sticker which it's not doing at the moment so let's just do that end okay right, that should do it that should do it There, brilliant. Through it goes. So just find the end. Thread that and pull the thread through. Fantastic. Now, next step is to take it up to the top of the front interplane. So we just poke the needle threader through. I'm getting the second thread confused with the one I should be using. So I'll just tidy that up and put it to one side for now makes it easier so with my threader threaded through that hole I just push it push the rigging wire through the loop pull and it's through so it's a pretty simple way of doing things here so the next hole we go through is the lower one on the um, on the interplane struts so I need to get the needle threader through the lower hole if I can actually see it there it is that's why not gluing it um, at this stage is a good idea so I've got my needle threader through there we go just twist slightly so I've got a bit of throughput let's grab it there we go so I don't need to obviously thread it all the way through there I just need a little a little bit and then pull it through the hole fantastic and I'm not pulling anything tight at the moment it's just it's got a bit of slack to it. Um, next step, we're going to take the thread up to the uh, top of the rear cabane strut. So push through from that side, from the inside out. So I can then take the thread from the outside inwards. Go. Fantastic. And then leaving it nice and slack. Then the thread goes from there. No problem, Jesus. Um, to the front cabane strut. So it actually. It sits along on the inside of the uh, of the strut itself, tucked up out of the way. Now be careful here because there are two holes. One of the holes is for the carbon fibre um, strut that will come out of the fuselage. Um, once we've got the top wing installed, we'll insert that. Um, uh, don't put it through there. Um, there's a, a hole forward of that that it goes through. That's that's the one to put it through. So this is running from the inside out. Goes 
stop it catching on all the bits and pieces. There we are. And then this runs to the uh, lower inter, um, interplane strut. Now we've got some crossover here. So this wire here crosses over with this and it needs to cross over on the inside because this is further forward. Um, if you don't do that, then one will pull against the other and distort it from um, its straight path. And it doesn't look right. And it isn't right. So let's just push through. So our thread is on the inside of that first strand that it crosses over with, which is how we want it. And then give it a quick twist. So I've got exposure of the threader. And drag that through. And all is good. So next step, this goes up to the top of the rear strut. Now it doesn't matter about the crossover uh, between the struts uh, because they're on the same plane. So, uh, so they won't be interfering. Go. And then the final passage goes actually down through um, the wing. Now on your kits there will be a lasered hole um, to tell you exactly where that goes. Um, but you will, I'm just getting um, a, a little tool here, yes. Oh. It is actually one of the yeah, one of the control rods. Um, there'll be a hole, but because of the new method of uh, the bit between the uh, uh, between the two wings, there, um, you'll need to actually create a second hole through the second skin that sits under here. Um, so you'll need to either use a needle um, or you can obviously just take the uh, the as yet unused um, control rod and just ease it or pop it through the hole that's already there and then ease it through the uh, rest of the material below. There we go. So then what I can do is push my Let's see where that came out. I didn't. I didn't look. It did come out, but I didn't look. Okay. There we go. So. I put my needle threader up through. There it. There it is. And then. Bring that through. Just get a bit through, and then in it goes. Fantastic. There we go. And this thread actually sits behind the um, the thread coming in the opposite direction. Um, that will then not into he said mm -hmm, mm -hmm. just checking for the interference I thought it was it went behind but let's just check yeah no that looks fine yep goes behind 
Good. So that's them threaded. Now, if you want, because there's plenty of thread supplied with the kit, um, you can leave a tail. Obviously, all this is 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 slack anyway. You can pull maybe a little bit, a little bit more through. There we go. Um, and then I'm going to leave a, a tail there and then just chop that off for now. There we go. Pop that to one side and then onto the, uh, the next wing. So um, if you'd like to watch me do this all over again in the opposite direction, then uh, I'm videoing it so of course uh, you can but uh, if you want to fast forward because you think yeah I've got that technique that's not a problem John um, then by all means uh, zoom to the end and go and watch uh, part eight um, so anyway what are we doing yes from the outside in Just pushing the uh, the knife through just to start a little bit of a hole in the uh, the corresponding sticker on the other side. And then let's just get that excess. That will be needed for the uh, the tail. There's some rigging that goes on the tail as well. Um, the rigging is not 100% accurate. The SE5A actually did have. Uh, a little more rigging than uh, is represented on here, but because of the scale, uh, because it's a flying aircraft, um, it helps not to have too much rigging, not to have too much drag. Um, and also, if you are making it, the SE-5A is a, it's a lovely aircraft, and I wouldn't want people to not build it just because it, it was a little bit too complicated. Um, right, figure of eight knot. <laughs> this is when you know your hands are too chubby. There we go. Cut off that excess. Of course, this, uh, this little knot sits behind the wheels once they're installed. So, uh, won't be seen. Okay, I'm just going to use my knife to start that little hole in the uh, in the sticker. There we go, it goes through easily then. Right. I thought I had hold of it. It obviously fell off. You're probably all looking at me going, you haven't got a thread in your hand. Silly boy. Let's try again. So, there. Through the threader loop. Pull. Superb. How's that pit at tube looking? Marvellous. Okay. This is when you're grateful that there's so much flexibility with these uh, materials. Um, it makes the whole thing, even if you are like me, a little on the clumsy side, um, makes the whole thing less fraught with uh, any maneuvers that might damage the uh, the build so far so anyway ok 
Okay, so we need to go down through here. So the great thing about not having glued, and you can sort of just waggle a little bit extra up through, and then hey presto, the needle threader goes through. a little bit of friction there because you know when it comes to tightening the uh, the rigging when it's everything's in place that's really going to help because it'll lock things in place okay so up to Cabane strut. So you see, it does, it does involve a lot of arm waving <laughs> and knocking cameras. Sorry. Well, at least the camera's still working. That's a bonus. say on this one this goes now goes behind the uh, the first one I can see the hole go on there we go Let's get our end, make sure we go behind. There we go. It's gone behind. You can get yourself into all sorts of trouble. I have got myself into all sorts of trouble um, rigging kits. Um, but it's always a disappointment when you do it and it's, oh, I've got to undo it all again. And I've got to undo it and then do it all again. But. Uh, But at least it's relatively easy to uh, to sort out, especially if you've got one of these little needle threaders. It's a, absolutely perfect for the job, it really is. This would be a lot more difficult if it wasn't for these uh, little items. So. Once again, let's put a hole in it. And as said before, this first hole is something that you won't need to create. The second hole um, below there is. So use your uh, use your as yet unused control rod um, to do that. It's just a, it's a nice bit of steel wire works perfectly for the job there we go up through this runs behind Through, pull it down. There we go. So, once um, well, uh, this will be shown anyway. But just 
as a point of interest um, once we've tightened um, the rigging and this thread just gets stuck to the inside of the rib there um, to secure it in place um, it's quite an effective way but if you do need to release it um, if you need to tighten the rigging for any reason or, or replace it um, then uh, it's it's there it's available it's exposed for you to be able to do that so uh, that's that's how it all works so let's get rid of some of the excess here there we go and that is our rigging done and I think that's probably a good place for us to uh, uh, to pause and uh, go and make a cup of tea and then I'll come back and uh, we can move on to uh, to part six so um, thank you very much let's see if uh, that's the billboard that's me full screen um, oh and there we have and it's still working there we have our little model so fantastic we've got the rigging on um, we've got our interplanes in place we've added our little um, pitot tube detail um, so uh, next uh, next episode part eight uh, we should be building the top wing i hope um, i will see you then thank you very much for watching mm -hmm.